In this video, I'm going to show you how to oil your valves the right way so you don't end up like this. I'm also going to dismember a trumpet with a grinder to help you understand how a trumpet actually works. Unscrew the valve cap, pull the valve out about halfway, add a few drops of oil, spin the valve round to spread the oil in the casing, reattach the valve cap, press the valve out up and down a couple times, that's it, you're done. 20 seconds tops. Now, let's talk about some of the common mistakes that students make when learning to oil their valves. You need a simple, small rag to place underneath your instrument in case you drip or drop any little bits of oil on your lap so you don't end up looking like this. Remember this picture? You don't want to be this person. Don't buy a fancy rag or go to the store and say you need to get a rag. Ask your mom for a rag. Chances are your dad's probably got an old t-shirt from college that he shouldn't be wearing anyways that she'll happily tear into little pieces for you. By only pulling it out halfway, you allow the oil to roll back into the valve casing because it's already at a downward angle. There's no reason to pull the valve all the way out of the casing. All you do is risk the chance of dropping on the floor and ending up with something like this. Yuck. Dropping a freshly oiled valve attracts all the dirt and grime that's on the floor and you end up with this. Have you ever considered how much brass spit has been emptied onto this floor? Think about that the next time you almost drop your valve, or better yet, the next time you have a movie, you go, ooh, ooh, can we lay on the floor? Keeping the valve in the casing makes sure all the oil goes in the casing and not on your pants. And you should never use valve oil like this. Only a few drops, folks. Now let's talk about the twist. The twist is when you slightly rotate the valve in the casing to spread the oil around. It also helps you figure out how clean the casing is. It should float and glide. If you can feel it catch or hang up, it's a clue that you might need to clean your valve casings. Someday, I'll have another video that you can click on right here to watch a video about how to clean your valve casings. If you didn't take the valve out of the casing and you didn't twist it too much, then putting it back is really very simple. But in order to understand how the valve needs to fit into the trumpet, you need to understand a little bit more about the trumpet. This is Travis the trumpet. He's had a good life and he's way too broken to repair. This is Greg the grinder. He's gonna help us discover how the trumpet works. Follow the air and the vibrations from the mouthpiece down the lead pipe, through the tuning slide crook, and down to the third valve casing. Here it's hard to see where the air goes next, so Gary the grinders removed all the tubing for us. Don't worry about Travis the trumpet. All these extra parts will help me fix another trumpet. There, that's a little easier. Now we can see that it goes through the valve casings and then has a straight shot out of the trumpet. When you press down a valve, you're redirecting the air through the tubing attached to each casing, like this picture, the little red lines. The slide on a trombone is easy to understand because as it extends, the pitch gets lower. Same concept here, when you press down a valve, you're making the trumpet longer and lowering the pitch. Notice the green paper clip shows you how the air travels through the valves. So why do we need to know all of this about the trumpet to oil our valves? Well, it helps us understand why each valve has to go back in exactly the right place, because all those pathways for the air are very precise. If you put the first valve in the second casing, your trumpet is not going to work. This is why brass valves look like Swiss cheese and have all these holes. In order to get the valves back in correctly, you have to look for what I call the groove and the nose. Every valved brass instrument has these. They're called valve guides. Here is the groove. It's a slot for the nose. Here's the nose. When the nose fits into the groove, most trumpets will make a slight click. So as you turn the valves in their casing, you will hear a click when it's found its groove. Now that seems really complicated, but there's a real easy way to figure this out. All valves have a number stamped on them. You simply get the number to face the mouthpiece and you're already lined up. You just have to wiggle a little bit to get the click. If you find that you cannot blow air through your trumpet or it sounds stuffy, check these numbers to make sure they're facing the right way. And now the last part, screwing the cap back on. The top of a plastic soda bottle is an excellent example of the threads that are also on the top of your valve casings. If you've ever put the cap on your bottle slightly crooked, 
and messed it up or been able, unable to get it off, you understand this concept. It's called cross-threading. The best tip is to actually go backwards. Don't start out going right. Go lefty-loosey until, until it clicks and falls into the groove. Then it's real easy. So lefty-loosey, then righty-tighty. And that's it. And now you've successfully oiled your valves like a pro. They should move freely. If they don't, your valve casings are dirty. And again, that's another video for another time. Thanks for watching. My next project will have to do with these wonderful instruments that students find on the internet for 100 bucks and coming in multiple colors. I want to get some of these and use them in my classroom and document their slow decline into junk and make a little video so that when students ask me, hey, should I get this blue trumpet on eBay? I can say, no, here's a video of what's going to happen to your instrument or something I can send to parents and hopefully preempt some of these. So if you're interested in helping with this project, reach out to me. Um, if you want to see the results of this, I guess hit the subscribe button and the bell so you know when it comes out. I'm not really sure when it's going to get done, but it's a, something I'm working on actively right now. And if you have any great, wonderful war stories about these instruments in your classroom, let me know, because I want to hear them. I'm calling these projects Band Directors Anonymous. If you want to help or you have an idea, let me know. Come on in. Thanks. See you later.